So nice to see you again. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Hugs. Yes, as always. Um, drink of the day is water, but it's just it's one of these little waters and it's low-key a little bit frozen, y'all. Um, again, just want to thank y'all so much for the support recently on my last two uploads and my subliminal specifically. If you have not listened to my subliminal yet, go ahead and check it out. It is a self-concept subliminal that has benefits of wealth, um, increased self-concept. Uh, increase in love everything like I've been getting so many different success stories surrounding it and I am just like so grateful and I'm so glad that you guys are benefiting from it and it's helping you I love you guys so much Mwah. as always allow my allow me to sell myself to you really quickly um, if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching with yours truly please feel free to click the link in my description and or comment section that will lead you to my website when you get to my website just be sure to read my disclaimer before booking as I do not take same day appointments unless you are an emergency appointment I also have text message packages now so go ahead and check those out if that's feasible for you boy oh boy this kind of um hits close to home for me because this is something that i dealt with a lot a lot at the beginning of my law of assumption journey which was dealing with guilt while manifesting i grew up predominantly christian very very religious i'm not anymore <laughs> in case y'all could not tell i'm not really a religious rebecca no shade to anyone who is i mean like walk your path of life i'm not here to shame you it personally just wasn't for me it wasn't something that i identified with anymore and i felt very stifled in religion um not gonna give y'all my whole life story but just to give y'all some context on why i want to talk about this so much when i migrated from religion to spirituality i felt very alive I felt seen and there were also just different aspects of spirituality that I just really enjoyed getting to get, get familiar with and explore and I feel like in recent years um, unfortunately there's just been a lot of living beliefs attached to spirituality too especially since it's become more popularized you know since TikTok and Twitter things like that whatever um, I just don't really I still very much so identify with spirituality let me not misspeak I heavily identify with spirituality. I just don't like some of the other limiting beliefs that are also attached to it because to me, the whole point of me leaving religion was to increase my expansiveness and then for me to be in that or what I thought was that and then get limiting beliefs push, pushed on to me within that community, it just made me feel kind of lost. When I first began my relationship with the law of assumption, I had a lot of guilt when it came to manifesting anything, period. It didn't matter what it was. If it was a specific person, if it was an amount of money, I think that what it particularly was was actually specific people just because I felt like the concept of taking away somebody's free will, what right did I have to do that? You know what I mean? That I didn't under really I didn't really understand the concept of what I was actually doing, which was just selecting a version of a person that is more ideal for me to interact with. When you're manifesting a specific person, you're not forcing them to do anything. You are thinking about them in a certain light that is most beneficial to you. You are thinking about the version of them that you would like to interact with consistently. And you're just choosing that version. You're not literally going out in your 3D and forcing them to do something. Manifesting, thought transmission, then getting the urge to do it just based off of the thoughts that you're thinking is not manipulation. It's just simple universal law. It's science. It's just what goes up must come down. It's literally the other way around too, which is like, I don't really get it because if you were to assume the worst from somebody and they did that to you, is that also not manipulation? by definition of what the spiritualists want to call it anyway <laughs> that, i didn't even get into the nitty-gritty of what i wanted to talk about yet y'all forgive me if this video is kind of all over the place but sometimes that's just how i am when i have something on my mind and i gotta get it out it comes out as organic as it does okay but i was struggling with feeling a lot of guilt i had guilt surrounding calling myself god I did not want to call myself God. I did not want to call myself the God of my reality because I felt as though, who am I? Who am I to compare myself to someone like God with the abilities that God has? 
um, who am I to say that I am in the realm of the angels and all of those things. And truthfully, as time went on and I continued my journey, I started to think about it a lot more. I started to think about how God is really just a universal, unconditional state of consciousness. God is everywhere and everything all the time. God is love. God is happiness. God is bliss. God is anything good and pleasurable, pleasurable and pure that you've ever experienced. God is bliss. God is abundance. God is prosperity. God is happiness. God is all of those things. God does not want you to live a life of lack. God does not want you to continuously go through these hurdles of pain and angst and anguish and sorrow over and over and over again in order to earn your rightful bliss or earn your abundance and prosperity. It's already yours. So there isn't anything that you have to do to get it. All you really have to do is step into your God consciousness. Once I understood that what really you are God is what you okay saying that you are God really insinuates that you have the ability to control your reality any way that you want to. Is that you have the ability to change and take control of your reality at any time. There is never a point in time that you are not in control that you cannot be the alchemist or the operant power. That is what that means. So if you are feeling any kind of guilt or you know, feeling some sense of entitlement by saying that you are God, you don't have to call yourself God. You don't have to feel comfortable calling yourself God. You can say that you're the operant power, that you are the alchemist, that you're the creator of your reality, whatever makes you feel best. But if you do wanna say that you are the God of your reality, do not feel guilt by saying that because I feel like a lot of us that do say, and I'm going to speak for myself and I'm going to speak for the people that feel like me right now, but I know that for me, when I'm saying that I'm God, I, I'm saying that number one, I'm an extension of God because I'm something that God has created. And if I am something that God has created, then I must have God like abilities because I'm coming from that source. The same way that people say, you're your mother, you're your father, because those two things collectively came together and created you. You were the outcome of that. Therefore, if we come from God consciousness and God created us, we all have God-like abilities. And I'm not the most biblical person. I am not going to sit up here and act like I'm very Bible savvy and I can reference and pinpoint this part and that part. But there are definitely things that Neville has pointed out himself that are biblical terms that refer to us being able to have the same capabilities of God. It's in the Bible. So there is proof to back that up. So don't feel guilty for saying that you have God-like abilities, for feeling like you are God-like, for feeling like you come from that realm of a limitless power, because you do. You're aware of it and you should be. Stand firm in that and don't let go of that. Uh, don't let go of that idea. Don't allow yourself to feel overrun with shame and ego, which brings me into my next topic of discussion. Shame, guilt, ego, all of those things. That is essentially just a part of your ego dying. That is your old subconscious programming. And to say was, I consider your ego and your negative thoughts, things restraining you. I kind of consider those to be one and the same. You know what I mean? They're both holding you back, limiting you, not serving you properly. I categorize them as one because I don't need anything to do with either one of them. So let it go. But that is not you, okay? That is like your old subconscious programming. It's fear. It's lack. Things that you have already had your run-ins and experiences with and you decided that don't feel good. I don't want to do that anymore. That is not my story anymore. So it's time to leave those in the past. When you're just trying to strip yourself of that old thinking and it seems hard to let go of, I know. I know. Keep going, okay? Feeling guilt about manifesting a specific person. I touched on this a little bit earlier in the video because I just could not help myself. I diverted off into a different conversation for a second, but you are just selecting the version of the person that you want to interact with most. It is nothing to do with manipulation. The same way that someone would, would manifest money or a house or anything that's like physically tangible. 
People have to give you those things too. It doesn't matter whether or not you're manifesting with law of assumption. It doesn't matter whether or not you're manifesting with law of attraction or you're using spell work or you call it a whole different fucking thing that we never heard of. It is all universally the same. Someone somewhere in the story has to give you what it is that you want. So tell me, is it manipulative to manifest a house? Is it manipulative to manifest a car? Is it manipulative to manifest a lump sum of money? Is it manipulative to manifest getting accepted into a school that you wanna to go to? Or an apartment that you want? Or getting a job that you want? People all have to have an inkling of a feeling, of an idea, of a light bulb in their head. Something has to go off to make them want to move in your favor. So don't be so hard on yourself because y'all are y'all are like, I can manifest straight A's, but I can't manifest someone to love me because that's wrong. Why wouldn't that one also be wrong? Why wouldn't that be manipulative of you to manifest your teacher giving you grades that you are favorable of? Why wouldn't that be morally wrong? So don't contradict yourself like that. There is no one or nothing outside of you that is shaming you for having what you want. Your spiritual team wants you to have what you want. Your subconscious wants you to have what you want. Your heart of hearts wants you to have what you want. Cause I know that if I can manifest for the benefit of my own life, I wanna help other people do the same. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for all of us to collectively experience bliss, live our dreams, not be stuck in lack, wake up to our God ability, live, laugh, love, be happy as fuck for the rest of our days. I want that for every fucking person amongst this green grass. <laughs> I want this for every walking person on this earth, every one of God's beings. I want people to be aware that they don't have to live in lack. And I was, I think I speak again for the vast majority of us who do law of assumption. We just don't want anyone else to be stuck in the shitty conditioning of what we were in because it didn't feel good. So remove yourself from guilt, shame, and doubt because they are no longer aspects of you. They never really have been. So you can just cancel them bitches and throw them in the trash right away. They don't have no business being here. Guilt is just a manifestation of the ego. Ego is just the old negative subconscious thinking. Throw it away. Don't forget to follow my Twitter at It's Her Universe and also follow my Instagram at Law of Assumption Princess. Duh. And until next time, you guys know that I love you. 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 I just cursed on to be with you. That's why the eye is all I want. I had a picture in my mind.